Good morning iFarm and a big welcome back to Sundays with Sarah. If you watched last week's video then you may know that I said this week I was filming a scary, a difficult vlog um, and if I didn't chicken out, hopefully I wouldn't, it would be going up this week as in today. Here I am feeling completely sick with nerves Telling myself don't do it, do something fun and light-hearted, keep everyone happy, but I'm here and I am about to share with you a difficult story. All week I have been umming and ahhing, telling myself I need to write notes so that I'm not just mumbling and jumbling and confusing myself and I've put it off and put it off and put it off until this morning when I said I need to do these notes and then I just 10 minutes ago said to myself no notes. If I've got notes, I'm going to feel like I'm reading a script. This is such a personal story. I don't want to feel like I'm reading a script. It has to come straight from here. So if it's mumbly and jumbly and I'm stuttering or repeating myself, I apologise. Please understand that. This is the way I want to do it. I want to say it without any prompting of papers or anything like that. I just want to just get it out there. Some of you may know that we, like all of us as a family, are part of the Channel Mum group which is an amazing support network for mums, well not just mums, it's, there's a quite a few awesome dads on there too, including Chris and quite a few others. It's an amazing parenting support network. It's so invaluable to, s invaluable? It's so valuable to so many people and if you're a new mum yourself and you're struggling with any aspect of being a parent, I really, really advise you to go on over to the Facebook page where there is such an amazing group of women. I'll leave a link actually in the description box down below. This week on Channel Mum, not this week, sorry, this month on Channel Mum, I have just been so, so proud to be part of such an amazing team of women. This month's topic, so to speak, has been around mental health spreading awareness and some members of the team have been so inspirational sharing their stories which I know a lot found difficult to share but they did so in order to support others that may be in the same situation and also to help spread awareness. If you or anyone you know are suffering from any sort of mental health then go on over to the YouTube channel, Channel Mum the Channel Mum YouTube channel, I'll leave a link to that also in the description box down below where you can go and just watch the videos because honestly they're just so inspirational. These ladies are amazing. So amazing that they have inspired me to share my own story which I do just want to say straight away isn't strictly mental health. Um, it's not strictly mental health but it got me thinking about my story and about what I went through when I was younger and basically I think it's just as important to share my story because it's also a subject that isn't talked about as much as I think it should be. I don't think it should be talked about at all because I don't think this subject should exist but it does and so many people right now in this world are feeling like I felt all those years ago when I was in this situation and Honestly guys, there's no lower feeling, there's no lower place than you could, that you could feel when you're in that situation and the main thing is you feel so alone, you feel like you're the only person in the entire world going through it and it's just the absolute worst. So as I just said, my story is not strictly about mental health. My story is about violent and abusive relationships. Before I start, I do just want to say that no names, dates, times or anything like that will be disclosed in this video. I feel like that would be unfair. It's just something I'm not comfortable doing and I would really, really appreciate it if you guys didn't speculate in the comments on who you think might might have been involved or who the person might may or may not be. I just don't think that would help anyone and I'd just rather there were no speculation in the comments, please. So quite a lot of years ago now, 
I found myself in an abusive, violent relationship. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how I let it happen because I was such a strong headed teenager who was so determined that I would be the leader and my life would not be ruled by a guy. Um, I always said, how, why would you stay with someone if they hit you or they make you feel so bad? That was me. And that's probably what a lot of you guys sitting there right now are saying, but I did. I don't know how it happened. It happened very gradually and I found myself going from being the person that would say, just leave. If you're in a violent relationship, just leave, to suddenly being a scared teenager thinking, how did this happen? How am I still, how did this happen? It was probably, I know I'm only 32, so I'm not saying like I'm really old and fully life experienced, but it was the lowest point so far of my life. This guy that I was with cheated on me weekly. He mentally abused me and he physically violently abused me literally multiple times a week. And basically I'm sharing this story just to show how easy it is to fall under a trap of them manipulating your mind and making you believe that it's not actually them that's the problem, it's you, which is what I come to believe. I came to believe that I was the problem, it was me, there was something wrong with me, I was doing something wrong or I wasn't doing something right and it was my fault. I'm not obviously going to go into every single detail, I'm not going to share more private, personal sides of the time that I was with this guy, but I do want to share one story because this story shows how easy it is for them to manipulate your mind and make you believe that everything that happens is your fault. So I think I just turned 17. I just turned 17. I was so excited that I was finally able to get my provisional license and hopefully start my driving lessons. Yes, here I am at 32, still not passed. <laughs> but I was 17. I just got my provisional and I was so excited. And this this guy that I was with said to me, we were, we'd had a lovely day. It wasn't a bad day. It was a nice day. And he said, why don't you sit in my car and drive it? He lived on an estate that wasn't on a main road so it was kind of like a private private road and he said why don't you get in the car and try and drive it on this private road and I said oh no I, I can't do that like I felt like it was illegal I wasn't insured on the car um and I didn't want to do it and I said no I'd best not I best just wait and he's like no try it and I knew this guy I knew what he was capable of and when he told me to do something, it wasn't a case of, do you want to do it or not? It was a case of, I'm telling you to do it, get in the goddamn car and drive it. It wasn't at that stage yet, but I knew if I kept saying, no, I don't want to, no, I don't want to, it was going to get to that stage. I didn't want it to get to that stage. I was scared. So I got in the car and I don't know how many of you who are watching this have started driving, are, are doing lessons, are at that stage in your life yet, but the worst place to start a car for your first time, potentially, is on a hill. Hill starts are hard. I don't have a problem doing them now. And actually after that, this, this initial time doing it, I didn't have a problem. But we were on a hill facing upwards and he wanted me to start the car and drive it up the hill. And I could not do it. I kept stalling over and over and over and over again. I couldn't get the car to go. Every time I tried, it stalled. And I was sat there thinking, I could feel the tension in the car rising. He was really not happy with me. He was saying things like, are you an idiot? Why are you so dumb? How can you not start a car? It's so easy, I do it every single day. You're stupid. And I was absolutely terrified. Like now, sitting here thinking, but it actually makes me quite emotional. This isn't a story that I talk about often, obviously, but I don't actually think I've sat and spoke about any of the detail. My family know, Chris and his family know, but it's not a story that I often think about. And when I think about details like this, it takes me right back to that time and how, and how I felt in that moment. And it was not a nice feeling. So I was sat in this car feeling terrified. 
my legs started shaking, I could feel the, in the pit of your stomach where you feel like something bad's about to happen. And I just knew I was making him angry. And he was calling me, you know, what are you doing? All you have to do is take your foot up and push that one down. And I was terrified. There was no way I was going to start the car with my legs shaking the way they were shaking. And I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And I was sat there thinking, this is escalating really quickly. I need to get myself out of this situation. What do I do? And I remember putting my hand on the hand, saying I can't do it, and putting my hand on the handle of the door, and he flipped. He literally lashed out. He punched me in the temple here, and he hit me with such force that it actually completely knocked me out. It knocked me flat out. And I can remember, it was only seconds, it wasn't like he knocked me out and I was unconscious for ages. It was like literally a couple of seconds. It, it was probably more dazed, to be honest. It was probably more dazed, I don't know. But I can remember just being slumped forward and then sitting up and him going, look what, you've, look what you made me do, you're such an idiot. And I can remember I started crying and I knew it was over. Like once I started crying and he was in that mood, it was done, it was just about, reached its peak and would come down. And I can remember sitting there crying my eyes out thinking, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Why couldn't I just start the car? It's not a big deal, what's wrong with me? If only I could have started the car, I wouldn't have made him angry. If only I could have done this, it wouldn't have escalated. If only I'd have just got straight in the car straight away and started instead of working myself up about it, it wouldn't have escalated. And basically, that's how easy it is. That's how easy it is for them to manipulate you and make you believe that you're the problem. It's not them. They don't have the problem. You're the problem. You shouldn't wind them up. You shouldn't say the wrong thing. You should just do what they ask you to do. And it's so far from the truth. I was not the problem that day or the umpteenth other times this happened. I wasn't the problem. He was the problem. And even if I was doing something that he didn't agree with or he didn't want me to do or he didn't like me doing, that does not give anybody the right to make you feel like he made me feel or to literally put his hands on me to a point where he hurt me. I remember another time, I think I was dazed or knocked, knocked twice. The second time it happened, his parents took me to hospital because they were worried and they tried to admit me to hospital and I discharged myself. I discharged myself because I was absolutely terrified that my parents would find out. I was so scared. This is ridiculous. And you're going to look at the screen right now and say, are you insane? What even are you? But I was so scared that my parents would find out and stop me seeing him. <laughs> like. I was scared my parents would find out what he was doing to me because then they might stop me from seeing him. How unbelievably crazy is that? Like what on earth must have been going through my mind to make me think I need to get out of this hospital and discharge myself because if my mum finds out or my dad finds out then they'll make me stop seeing him. That's how scary it gets guys. That's how easy it is for them to make you feel so low that they're all you've got. If, no, if nobody else would want me, I'd be on my own if I didn't have him because I was the problem. So I should be grateful that he was still putting up with me. Honestly, there's no lower feeling than feeling like that. I'm actually not going to share any more of this story because obviously it's quite personal and the reason for me doing this video is not to give you all the details of my <laughs> boring life. Um, it's to raise awareness and I think that story that I just told you really shows how how easy it is for them to manipulate you but I really hope that any women and not just women men men affect men are affected by violent relationships ships too and they're no less important and I really hope that if any of you guys are watching this if you've been through similar or you're going through similar do not Try not to let them believe that you are the problem because I promise you, you're not the problem. And you have to get out of that relationship you're in. You have to leave. As hard as it is, and I know it's hard, this, this guy actually was the one that split up with me. He left me 
ironically. And I remember I didn't eat for about three weeks. I was absolutely heartbroken. I thought my life was over. I thought nobody else would ever want me. And I was just completely devastated that the only person that would ever love me had left me. But they don't change. The second, the second I had moved on, this guy desperately for a long time tried to get back with me. And I mean a long time. And the whole time he was trying to get back with me was behind his current girlfriend's back, which I think Chris is home, which just proved to me that this guy will never change. I don't care what anyone says, this guy will never change. I'm not doing this video for any sort of sympathy or, oh my goodness, I'm sorry you went through this. I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it to help spread awareness and help show you if you're watching this video and you're going through what I did, I felt exactly like you're feeling right now. I promise you I did. And look at me now. Honestly, my life's amazing. I feel so lucky and so fortunate that I have the life I have, that I met Chris when I did. Because if I didn't meet him when I did, who knows what my life would have turned into. He was literally my saviour. <laughs> he was my knight in shining armour. And I honestly, the, the way he treats me, Chris treats me, I remember for the first probably year, two years, thinking he's up to something. When's he gonna when's he going to show his true colours? Because this can't be how guys actually are. Guys are only guys if they treat you well. If they don't treat you well, they're not guys. They're not men. They're not men. They're pathetic excuses of humans. And the same with women. If you're a woman and you treat your man bad, you're not a woman. I'm sorry, but you're just not. And if this story helps just one person. If it helps bring comfort to just one person or gives just one person the courage to pack their bags today and leave, then it's been worth sharing this story with you guys. <sighs> Woof. I'm glad that's all out and done with. Fingers crossed I can edit this now and get it uploaded for you without saying no, I can't do this. Fingers crossed I can do it. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Like I said at the start of this video, I will leave links down in the description box. I will also leave links to violent relationship, abusive relationship support, contact lines, people that you can contact if you want to speak to someone that's not related to you, and the links to the channel mum page because they are just such amazing ladies sharing inspirational stories all the time and I really believe that anyone can get so much help and support from them. I hope you've... No, it doesn't feel right, so I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video. I hope this video has maybe helped some of you guys and thank you all very much for watching. Bye guys!